I have a purpose on the planet to uh, awaken the masses. And um, I'm really in tune with the problems of the world. And I think that the number one issue in the world is ignorance. And I do believe with more knowledge, there is more power in the hands of the right people. And without a stable individual, there is no stable society. And I think this is really important for all of our survival, not just humans, but the planet in and of itself, you know, plants, animals, water, because our ignorance in humanity is affecting all life. Would you agree? For sure. I don't think we're more evil than ever, right. but we are totally confused more than that, ever. Correct. So it's the confusion is just horrible. Yes, yes. And dangerous. Yes, very dangerous, right. And uh, so I wanted to bring this conversation to light because I've been running my channel for about two years now. And recently, maybe about a month ago, someone sent me your content and you had a episode what scares men and people were so excited to give that to me because the things that you were saying in that episode is exactly my teachings to women and i think it's critical that women really realize their value add to society and their contribution as well as knowing the nature of men i think women's confusion who men are, how men operate, has also contributed to a lot of the dysfunction on the planet. And uh, I would like to know what you would say about that. See, it started off with confusion about God. Mm -hmm. That became confusion about religion, mm -hmm. which turned into confusion about policy, politics, mm -hmm. leadership. Yeah. It kept on deteriorating until we've reached the bottom of the barrel. Mm -hmm. We're confused about gender. Correct. And now you can't function, you can't live, you can't, nothing. Right. We're, we're, we're wiped out. Yes. And, and you would think that it couldn't get any crazier. I'm afraid to say that. <laughs> right. Because right. You don't know. Crazy is infinite. Right. It is, just like everything else in right. the universe. Logic is finite. Right. You make sense, you make sense. It's right. It. But crazy can just go, I don't know. But, but life cannot be sustained this way. Correct. Life is not infinite. Right. You either do it correctly or you kill yourself. Right. And I think we are at that point. Yeah. Right. Um, we have on both sides of the equation because the principle, the, the number one principle in this planet, on this planet that we're really, really having difficulties with is the principle of gender, masculine and feminine and this idea of roles. And the destruction of the world, each party thinks that they're the only ones that are suffering. Um, the male thinks that it's chaos in his world and the woman is benefiting. She thinks there's chaos in her world and the man is benefiting. When in reality, they're both suffering uh, extensively. They're, it's, it's traumatic on both sides. And so I want to kind of get down into... One of the, the things that really just sent up antennas, which was coming from you, because coming from a woman, it just sounds like I'm just anti the world. I'm an extremist and I'm just anti man or anti woman. That's the way it appears to be. But what the people don't realize is that it took extreme measures to get us here and the extremity to what has taking place has taken us so far away from the truth that the truth sounds extreme at this point. And there was something that you said in your show that was sent to me um, that men and women together just causes chaos, right? It's complete dysfunction and men and women will never truly understand each other uh, because of the massive differences just in psychology and that raised some red flags for the your audience but it reverberated a sentiment in my audience that oh my god this is coming from a rabbi saying the same thing that Priscilla is saying can you give me some insight 
as to why you told your audience that and uh, the premise behind uh, the chaotic nature between men and women being in the same environment. Before we get to that, yes. part of the problem is people don't have opinions anymore. They just take sides. Correct. So the only thing they'll hear is, oh, so you're on that side? Yes. So you're, you're, you're for the men. Yeah, you're for the women. You're for the... There's no thought behind it. Correct. It's just safety in numbers. Mm -hmm. right, you know, who, who's more popular right now? That's who I go with. No. It's very sad. It is sad. So the idea that men and women are not good for each other, mm -hmm. I think is so, so much a, matter, a fact of life. Yes. That in a moment of honesty, everyone will admit it. Mm -hmm. I was speaking to a high school mm -hmm. in Minnesota, about 200 kids in an auditorium. And I said, you know, this dating thing is really, really nasty. Mm -hmm. You know, there are the, those who make it and there are those who don't. Mm -hmm. and, and there's heartbreak and, there, and there's trauma and there's, it's, it's a mess. Yes. It's a horrible thing. Yes. And the pressure is like, oh, you don't have a boyfriend? You don't have a girlfriend? You have no date? You know? I said, I suggest an interesting pro uh, experiment. Mm -hmm. A moratorium. No dating, no socializing, men and boys and girls separate, go your own way, live by... Uh, who agrees to that? Nobody did. Boo, nobody. boo, boo. No, nobody agrees to it. After the class was over and I'm kind of talking to the students individually, mm -hmm. Every one of them said, I think, I think it's a good idea, but nobody else will. Right, right. So that group mentality distorts everything. But individually, even teenagers yes. need a relief from these social pressures. Right. So a, a teenage girl who has a boy in her life, mm -hmm. her femininity is messed up. Correct. What is it? Girl interrupted. Yes, she's like, yes. she's not going to grow up to be what she's supposed to be because she's already compromising. Correct. And the boy, mm -hmm. he'll never, never get to be a man because he's trying to accommodate feminine energy and he's not even a man yet. Correct. That's why God invented marriage. Mm -hmm. Marriage is where the man becomes a husband. And the woman becomes a wife. Mm -hmm. Now they need each other. Right. Now they're not better off without each other. Mm -hmm. But as a man and a woman, you're better off without each other. Correct. And um, this is a, this is definitely something that I share with the audience because in relationships, relationships are based on need. And when you put a person in a needy situation, they end up compromising themselves and they start to look outside of themselves for other people to fulfill these voids which keeps the which keeps both individuals incomplete where they start to drain the, the life out of each other with expectations well we're supposed to do this because we're in a relationship this is what you're supposed to do and in that instance it forces people into an unnatural situation and when it comes to marriage or just relationships in general, specifically dealing with the male, there's a reason why the male functions the way he functions. And no amount of medical interventions is going to change that. Uh, and it, it is due to the universal principles of how masculine energy functions and how feminine energy functions. And the male's brain wiring is drastically different from women's. And Would, you know? Yes, I definitely do know. Pray tell. Yes, okay. So what appears to be impediments for the male is based on a social expectation. Men are being judged on the rubric of a woman because women are naturally social. The male is naturally antisocial for reasons of survival. Um, this is coded into his biology simply because men are to compete with each other to gain access to 
women. This is just the hardwiring of the male nature, which means there are certain aspects about him that are turned down, whereas women have certain aspects about them that are turned up due to them needing to take care of the children and create a village for support within them. That's not necessarily how the male operates. The male operates naturally in a dominance hierarchical um, way. Because of that, it makes the male's life very difficult because he has codependent ways that he needs to come out of before he can actually stand on his own. In modern marriage today, men have been handicapped, never having to actually stand on their own. They have been told to seek a woman and their expectations of the woman is to take care of all of these things that he can't perform on his own. So with the draft, there used to be the draft, so the military would take them in and they would take care of them. You know, I was in the military and the, the way of life of the military, don't think, just do what we say, follow orders, we give you three hots and a cot, and that's it. So that's a form of being taken care of, never actually utilizing your own mental faculties and your own discipline to lead your own life. Outside of that, before he gets there, his mother took care of him, right? And the rules of society is place all of that pressure on the girl, cook for your brother, clean up, let him play video games, whatever. That's how this society is being run. Once he gets out of that, into the military or into the workforce where, you know, jobs are given to him, duties are given to him, responsibilities are given to him through that mechanism, then he has a wife to pretty much take care of everything else. So he's not really been able to stand on his own and to truly become a man. So it's, it's handicapped him so greatly that where we are now, it p appears that society is pulling the rug from under men. Um, and women have a change in thought of how they should interact with men, which is leaving men in a very uh, peculiar situation where they are panicking and not knowing how to stand on their own because they never did stand on their own. And I think that is a result of their brain wiring because the male has always been given a duty by society. Go to war. That'll teach you to be a man. Um, create a family and be responsible for that family. That'll teach you to be a man. Um, but he's never had an internal compass to say, this is my value add to society. This is what I'm supposed to do. They're looking externally for that. Women don't do that. We're like kind of hardwired to know what our responsibilities are. And we always look for a public service ad. The male is not like that. And if you don't guide him, he's lost. And that, that difference is what creates a lot of the chaos even in relationships, because if the man can't uphold the social expectations, even though he also has to control the sexual urges and all of the thoughts that are going through his head due to the flood of external stimuli, with having to do all of that and failing at societal expectations, the male is crumbling emotionally. Um, and the woman doesn't really understand why. And because she doesn't understand why, she's unconsciously putting extra pressure on him to perform in a way that he really can't. And... Oh, is that what it means? It's not good for man to be alone? Yes, yes. Yeah, but let's, let's back up a little bit. Sure. This is what went wrong mm -hmm. for men. Mm -hmm. What would be the right thing? Mm -hmm. In other words, what is a man before you mess him up? He's just a male. Before Which he, is what? Which is... <laughs> what would a man be if no one messed him up? What would a man be? He would just be a wandering, um, a wandering phallus looking for a, uh, an external vessel to uh, transfer his genes into and just try to figure out life. Either he's going to do that and perish or just try to survive. And that's just what he is. 
until you put them in society and say, that, nope, you can't be that. <laughs> that doesn't give men a very good starting point. It doesn't, but it, that's the, the basis of all life begins with the biological code or, you know, um, uh, the five characteristics of life. We all follow it. So um, the male has to be trained to be social or to function in society. Well, yeah, we all have to be trained. Yes. But what are we starting with? What gifts do men start with and what gifts do women Excuse me. Well, bring to the picture? Well, everybody has different gifts. If we're talking about just on the biological level, there is no gift outside of biology if we're just speaking of uh, procreation. But then when you get to the spirit level, though, that's where the gifts are here and we are creators we have things that we do whether it's drawing singing painting music all of the art forms are gifts to this world that unfortunately we haven't been allowed to keep amongst ourselves and share amongst the community those have been capitalized on by uh, external you know, entity, but that's another topic for a conversation. But the fact of the matter is, is that we all have natural gifts that we can add to society. The problem for males is, is that their biological need overshadows the gifts that they can have. And so instead of transferring that energy into an external purpose, whether it be through arts or some creative effort, they're wasting it on coping mechanisms, right? They're wasting all of their energy through the desire for sex, which makes it really hard for men because of that. It's always that competition between men naturally that takes them off of a higher purpose. It's not that they don't have gifts because we all do. It's just that they don't know where their ad is. Let's try another approach. Sure. Yeah. God is creating the world. Yeah. On Sunday, he created light. On Monday, you know, right, right. Mm -hmm. And then on Friday, he creates the first human being mm -hmm. and says, not enough to have man alone. Mm -hmm. I'm going to create a woman, too. Okay. Why did he have to say that? Just create what you need to create. Create, right. You're on a roll. Go ahead. <laughs> yes. You're doing great. Yes. Why do you have to stop and say, hmm, not good for man to be alone. I'll create a woman. Just go ahead and create a woman. Correct. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Here's a difference between the male and the female mm -hmm. functions, energies. Mm -hmm. Everything God created up to man and including man mm -hmm. is raw material with great potential. God said, you know, that's not good enough. Now I got to create something that is what it's supposed to be, not only a potential. Mm -hmm. So I'm going to create a woman. Mm -hmm. So the difference between the man and the woman is the man has potential to be. Mm -hmm. The woman is. So the man has this deep uh, pressure to accomplish because he's not what he's supposed to be by nature, right. by creation. Mm -hmm. So he has to achieve, he has to accomplish, he has to fix something, acquire something that he doesn't have. Mm -hmm. The woman, on the other hand, is perfectly content with who she is, mm -hmm. but wants to nurture others. Mm -hmm. So she doesn't have that intense right. fear of maybe not accomplishing and being a zero. Correct. You can go, as a woman, you can go from a one to a ten. Mm -hmm. There's no zero. Right. Because I am what I'm supposed to be. Right. Now the question is, how much can I nurture mm -hmm. in others? In some way, it turns out, men thrive on fixing what is wrong. Mm -hmm. Women thrive on nurturing what is good. Here's when men and women hang around together too much, mm -hmm. like a totally co-ed society. Correct. Men develop a need to receive 
to be nurtured. And women develop this feeling of responsibility to change things, to fix what's wrong. And we're both frustrated. And it's not working. It's not working. Even intimacy, even the sexual drive, it's all constructive. A man feels that he needs to procreate to make life. Correct then he's accomplished something. Mm -hmm. uh, the woman feels, life is great, let me nurture it. Right. I mean, even biologically, that, that's the truth. It is the truth, yes. The uterus doesn't go looking, right? but whatever comes to the uterus it will nurtured. blossom, mm -hmm. come alive, it will be nurtured. So men are the providers, women are the nurturers. A man can bring home wheat. Mm -hmm. It's not bread. <laughs> you can't eat wheat. Mm -hmm. So when men start feeling like they should be receiving pleasure right. instead of giving pleasure, mm -hmm. they're emasculated. Mm -hmm. When a woman feels she has to fix everything that's wrong, I don't know what the what the equivalent for emasculated <laughs> in women. I don't I don't think there's actually a word for it. But, but it's frustration. It's, frus it's frustration for sure. So, in a marriage, mm -hmm. the man is the provider, the protector, bring home what isn't in the home. The woman, on the other hand, is anything good, I'll make it better. So women are content when things are good. Men are bored when things are good because there's nothing to fix. Mm -hmm. And that is that is a result of the electrical current that is to continue moving because that is the that is the principle of masculine energy. Masculine energy is a move. That's what energy. we were created for. Right. Men were created to become something. Mm -hmm. Women were created to, to make something. other things become. Mm -hmm. If you enjoyed this conversation or this topic and you're looking for more information or you want to hear it again from another angle, there is a way to do that. And that is in this book. It's all there. Order it from Amazon. You can read it, reread it, and share it.